Welcome to lesson seven, where we're gonna now load all our custom settings on page load. Now we've kind of got two things to worry about. One would be if they've saved anything inside of their application storage. So if I come in here and look at the application storage right here in local storage, do they have anything saved here? The second thing I wanna think about is what I want my default settings to be. So if I want it to be toggle sound on by default or motion on by default. Now there's a couple of different ways to handle this. Like for instance, for the sound, all we'd have to do is set this to true by default and then toggle it false if that's the case. So that's one thing we could do, but that would be different for motion and different for round. So we're gonna handle that in, a, in another way that kind of handles all of our use cases all at once. We also need to update the actual UI itself. So those are the three things we need to think about. If they've got anything in local storage, how we're gonna handle default states, and then how to update the UI on page load as well. So let's go ahead and do those kind of one after the other. The first thing I wanna do is see if they have anything inside of their local storage. So under event listeners, we're gonna have a window event listener. So we'll say add event listener. And in this case, the event we're looking for is DOM content loaded. So once the content is loaded in the DOM, I wanna to check to see if they have anything in local storage. So I'm gonna grab all of these, and we could do this in a couple different ways, but for instance, I could grab all the radios, and I could also grab all of the toggles. And then I could say for each of these, for each setting, I wanna grab the value of the local storage item. So we'll say value equals local storage dot get item. And then I wanna just pass it whatever the setting happens to be. Now before we do anything too much, I need to at least change the spelling to for each correctly. And now for each of these settings, this is just for now the element itself. So I need the setting dot name. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna go ahead and console log the value right here. So on page load, I get light primary true. Now, why am I getting that? Well, if I jump over here, you're gonna see that those are the values I have available. True, light, true, true, and primary. And if I jump back over here, you're gonna see I get three of these and et cetera, et cetera, as it loops through all these. So these are the values I'm getting back. Now that works just fine. And I can basically see, hey, I've got something in here. If, however, I come in here and I delete all these, so if I get rid of all these and I reload, you're gonna see that I've got null, null, null for all of these. All right, so I don't have anything in there. So I can actually check to see if I get a null value back. And it's something called a nullish coalescing operator. And in this case, I can say, hey, if it is null, go ahead and I just want it to be pizza or whatever it happens to be. All right, so now I get nine pizzas back. All right, so I can give it a value. If it is null, go ahead and give me this value instead. So what we're gonna do is use this right here to basically interact with what we want our default settings to be. So I, I know if it has an item, then it will be there. So for instance, if I toggle motion on and reload, now I got one true and the rest of them are pizzas. So in this case, I know I can get the item back and if not, I can give it a default value. So let's go ahead and handle now the default state. And I'm gonna do that by coming up top here and in my selectors, I'm gonna go ahead and declare something else up top here. And here I wanna go ahead and add my settings with defaults. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a array here. We're just gonna call it settings. And this array is going to have different objects inside of it. Each object is going to have a key. This corresponds with the thing I'm toggling like sound or motion or whatever. So the actual key itself and then a default value. I want my sound to be false by default. I'm gonna change it to true eventually, but just so we don't have to hear it uh, every time we click anything, I'm gonna leave it by uh, false by default. So let's copy this down a couple more times. The next one I have is motion, and that's the name I gave that, which is important. We're gonna set this to true by default. And then next we have the theme. In this case, I'm gonna set it to system by default. So by default, it's just gonna use their system, whatever they prefer. I also have round, and this will be false. I'm not really sure why I did those out of order, so maybe let's pop this bad boy up. And then next, and finally, I have custom color. And this will, will be accent too. So now that I got these settings here, instead of looping through all my different elements, I'm gonna come down here and just loop through my settings. So settings, and then for each setting, so each of those objects inside of that settings array, now we're gonna check against it. So this does change what we need to look for because it's not a settings.name anymore, it's the settings.key, right? So settings.key. And now if this isn't there, I want it to use my default setting instead. So I can just say setting, dot default. So I'm gonna first of all look for the key, which up top here would be sound or motion or round, and if it doesn't exist in my local storage, then go ahead and give me whatever the default value is instead. So I'll save this, and you'll now see I get some default values here, and if I have anything in the actual storage, it will show down below. So if I open this up, I've just got one motion true. Right now, I haven't named the names here, so maybe we should do that just to make it a little bit more clear. So we'll say name is setting.key, and then we'll just pass in the value as well. So now I get sound false, motion true, round false, theme system. So this is based on whatever my default is. In addition to that, I've got the application here where I've set the motion to true. 
all right, well, that's already the default anyhow, so no problem there. So you see it's actually getting either what's in the local storage or whatever the default setting is that I set up in my settings array. Now that I've got the value, I want to update two things about the UI. Number one, the actual like setting itself in the system. So like uh, the color would change, the theme would change. But also I want to actually change whether or not these things are checked or not checked. So we've got two things to worry about. One, we've already written a function for, which is update site UI. And I can come in here and say that the name is my setting dot key. And my value is my value right here. So it's either the default value or whatever I've got in the storage item. So now that means if I come in here and I select dark, it should switch it. But now when I reload, it actually loads that from storage. But notice this is not checked, even though it's actually applying the theme itself. So that's the second thing we need to do. And in that case, what I want to do is update the settings UI, which will be another function we write. And once again, we're going to pass it a name. That name will be the setting.key, and then we'll pass it the value. So it's going to look very similar to the one we've already written. So let me go ahead and copy this. And here, instead of the site UI, it'll be update settings UI. Once again, it'll take in a name and a value. And I've basically got two different types. I've either got Boolean triggers right here, or I've got different options. So these radio options down here. So let's go ahead and get rid of all this. And I'm just going to run a check, first of all, to say if the value, if it's true or false. So I'm going to say if it is true or if the value is false. If that's the case, then I know that this is a Boolean trigger. So what I want to do is select the individual checkbox that should be checked or not checked. So we'll just call this checkbox. This is going to be equal to document.querySelector. And here I've got a dynamic variable that's based on an attribute of name. Here I want to grab the name that's been passed in. And this actually needs to be in quotation marks right here. So let's go ahead and pull this over right like this. And I'll go ahead and console log this just so you can get a sense of what's going on here. Oh, like that. All right, so inside here, what I'm doing is for each of these things that are being loaded, I'm actually checking to find the checkbox itself. And there's only three of these toggles that are true, false of these three, so only three show down here below. Now remember they each have a name of sound or name of motion. So that's what I'm checking against to say, hey, if they have the name attribute that I'm looking for, go ahead and now what I wanna do is instead of console logging it, I just wanna check it. So I can return out of here the checkbox dot checked. Now, in this case, it's a little tricky because I need this to be a true Boolean, not just a string. And there are a couple different ways to do this, but let's just do a little ternary check. So I'm going to say if the value is equal to true as a string, then I want this to be true. So checked equals true. Otherwise, I want it to be false. So I need it to be a true Boolean. That's one of the ways to do that. So now you can see that data motion is true. Data round is true. And if I refresh, it now loads this as data round true. Now, because I've returned out of this, everything below here will just be one of those other options like theme or custom color. So what I can do is maybe let's come up here and say like these are Boolean toggles. And then down here I can say all remaining radios or something like that. I could also wrap this and say like if the value or maybe if the name equals a uh, theme, that might be another way to do this or if it equals custom color, but then every time I add a new radio option, I've got to add that down below. But just know that basically anything that is not a Boolean is now going to get brought down this way. And here I'm going to point a constant variable called radio to whatever the actual element is. So document.querySelector, and again, a dynamic variable, and this is going to be the ID of whatever that happens to be. So ID needs to be out here. This would be the value itself. Now remember, all of these down here, they all have IDs on them. So if I come inside here, ID of light. So that's what I'm searching for. I want to grab the ID of light and I want to change its status as well. In this case, I want to return radio.checked is equal to true. I don't have to worry about marking the others as false because by default, they'll be marked as false. It's only the one I check will be marked as true. So you can see that now I can select option two, refresh, and now option two shows. Now we do have one other thing to think about and that is our sound itself. Because even though, like let's say I come in here, I've updated the site UI and the site settings to say that it should be checked, this, every time this loads, this page loads right here, this will by default be set to true or to false. Now what I could do is come in here and set this to true by default, by default and then kind of switch it either way. But since we're going to be doing the exact same logic, I'll just leave it like that. And I'm going to come inside of the window event listener right here and do one more check. And that is simply to check to see basically if the setting it's looping over is the sound. So I'm going to say if the setting dot key is equal to sound. In this case, I want to do one more thing. And that is I want to update that variable is audio playable. Here, I want to check the value. And once again, I need to see if this is equal to true, the string. If that is the case, either from the local storage or from the default setting, 
Then I want to set this variable, this let variable up top to true. Otherwise, I want to set this to false. So now if I come in here and I select this, now when I reload the page, it will actually stay checked right here. And more importantly, this variable right here will be set to true inside of this JavaScript file itself. So that way, when I check something like this, it'll actually click and you'll hear that sound. It's just to show you what would happen if I did not do that. If I comment this out and refresh, even though it's technically checked, it's not going to actually play anything. And that's because this variable right here is already set to false. However, now with this set, if I come in here and I start clicking, you'll now hear the sound be played. Okay, so we've done all the functionality we need to theme this. The next step is going to be to actually style this the way we want. And there is some stuff to pay attention to with CSS here. If you want it to look better than just the custom default right here, then we're going to have to use some clever engineering to make this look the way we want it to, but function the way it already functions. All right, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll start by updating the CSS for these checkboxes right here.